Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Stephen King review. I'm going back over all of the books that I have not reviewed on the channel. And if you're sitting there thinking, hey, he already reviewed this one, I have not. I've, I've doubled and triple checked. You're probably thinking of my Thursday Theorist for different seasons. This is Stephen King's first novella collection, and everything but the final story, I believe, has been adapted. Everything but the but the breathing method, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to go through and just make sure. Yeah, everything but the breathing method. And I'm not sure how you could actually, I don't know. I, I don't know that you could, maybe it could be added to something like a, a, the reboot of Ghost Story or something, because Peter Straub, the same... This is this might be a spoiler, but if you've read The Breathing Method, you'll know what I'm talking about. I don't want to get into spoiler territory here. So first off, this beautiful book, um, I'm calling it beautiful just not, not only because the cover is very, very cool. I think it's uh, King's first really good cover, um, but also because the stories in here are beautiful, beautifully disturbing, um, all of that stuff. And it is broken up into the seasons, which we are going to go over one by one by one. Now, the first one is Hope Springs Eternal. The story for that one is Rita Hayworth and, say it with me now, The Shawshank Redemption. Um, Andy Dufresne in red, all that stuff. Um, if you haven't seen The Shawshank Redemption, uh, it is one of the best Stephen King adaptations ever filmed, period. It is very close to the book. Um, but anyways, uh, about the story itself, I, I, I like this one a lot. Uh, it's really really damn good and every single this is one of the, the I think it is the only one this is the only Stephen King novella collection that I like I love sorry love every single story in here for different reasons the reason I love this one is because the way it plays out it's an iconic story about a man wrongfully accused of a murder being sent to prison meeting a friend, and just all the little touches that Stephen King added, like the chess pieces and uh, Andy's abuse and rape while he's in prison, all of that stuff, it was, it, it's a very poignant tale of a man fighting for his life, and it's a very short retelling, I believe, of the Count of Monte Cristo. Um, I always want to say Monte Crisco, and I don't know why. It's like, e, no, it's not lard, it's, it, or whatever Crisco is. I've never actually had this stuff. Um, <laughs> there's people out there like, yeah, right, babe. never mind. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, so the, the first, the, that first story, I absolutely love it, and you're going to hear that a lot. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, it's just the, the way I talk when I don't have my thoughts written down on paper. Um, but we're going to jump directly from that to Summer of Corruption with Apt Pupil. Uh, this one, Jonathan Renfro, I believe, and Ian McKellen were uh, in the adaptation. I think the adaptation was serviceable. It was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it for what it was. The story, of course, is much more in-depth. It's much darker, I feel. Um, the oven, stove, whatever you want to call it in your neck of the woods, um, that scene is very disturbing um, to anyone. And, uh, but anyways, um, especially with the connotations of uh, who, uh, well, I don't want to say Ian McKellen, I forget the character's name, the old man, who the old man is and his history. Um, he was a Nazi, and the little boy, not the little boy, but the teenager uh, that Aunt, not, <laughs> Jonathan Renfro plays, I hope it's the right actor. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the boy in this, the teenager, uh, finds out this man's past, and they they have the probably one of the more most disturbing relationships uh, that isn't any anything like sexual. Don't get that out of your head. But it's one of the most disturbing relationships I, I I've ever read. Um, so I love App Pupil as well. I would give every single story in here five stars, but I, I'm repeating myself. I do it all the time, don't I? <laughs> Anyways, but uh, App Pupil is another favorite of mine. It, it's one of those that you know, you. You 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 kind of you kind of read you know like this with your eyes covered and peeking through your fingers because you know terrible things are coming. Uh, we're gonna jump right from that into Fall from Innocence. Uh, I, I like the word play there with the body, which is, was of course made into the absolutely stunning movie Stand by Me. 
Um, in fact, when people reference this story, they usually call it Stand By Me. It's so iconic. Um, but the story is actually called The Body, um, and it revolves four friends who go out to find a body. Um, it's like, hey guys, would you like to see a dead body? And they go out looking for uh, Ray Bauer? I don't think it's Brower. It might be. Ba it's. I think it's Bauer. They go out looking for a boy who was hit uh, by a train, and the adventure they go on is like none other. Um, in fact, damn near. If they don't compare it to it, every single coming of age story ever written, no matter what is going on in it, it does not matter. People bring up Stand by Me or The Body. Um, it is it is that iconic that it has changed pop culture. It has changed the references. You know, it, and it has made people think that every single story about a group of kids is either ripping off or taking pieces away from uh, the, the what Stand By Me or The Body. Even so much as my 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 debut novel under this name, uh, Bay's End, is constantly compared to to The Body. Whereas I used uh, Voice in the Night uh, by Dean Koontz and uh, The Traveling Vampire Show. Those were my inspirations for that. I hadn't even read The Body when I had seen the movie, but I hadn't even read The Body before... Uh, before I wrote Bay's End. Anyways, so going from that one, we're going into the final one, which is a winter's tale, and that is the breathing method. The breathing method I can't talk about at all, because to tell you what the story is about, uh, other than old men sitting around telling each other stories, horror stories, or what have you, um, it is a very condensed version of uh, Peter Straub's uh, ghost story, um, and I think it works... It, it, it works. It definitely works because in this, this novella, more than any other one in this collection, has a very unique visual stamp on my memory that has absolutely nothing to do with the, the movie. Well, there is no movie, but it has nothing to do with a movie adaptation. Um, when I, of course, when I read, I see Tim Robbins in Shawshank. I see him as Andy Dufresne. Um, I, you know, I see the people who played those roles in my head. But with this one, the horror of this one, the ending of this one, has been imprinted right in my gray matter. <laughs> see, gray matter, get what I, see what I, never mind, never mind, you got it. Um, but uh, it, it's one of the more most disturbing things I, I, I can think of. When people ask me, you know, what's the most disturbing thing you've ever read, that comes up. Um, a breathing, the breathing method, just the, the name alone kind of gives me chills because I think to that one scene. But that's all I have to say about different seasons. If you have not read it, it is an absolutely iconic, and I've said it so much, piece of literature in in existence. It's one of the, the most iconic. It changed pop culture uh, where people say that any anything like these stories is, is being ripped off, whether it be prison stories or whether it be uh, stories about kids. Any number of things. Stephen King, this is one of the the things, I think this is his first true, okay, I'm going I'm to upset some people. This I think this is his true first truly fantastic work of art where I don't have a single criticism for anything in it. And I like it even more than Firestarter, and you guys saw my review of Firestarter. But if you want to argue with me about that, or debate, or just discuss that down there in the doobly-doo, I'd love to hear from you. But if you read different seasons, uh, tell me what you thought of the novellas themselves, um, or the or the movie adaptations, doesn't matter. Uh, let me know all that down there in the doobly-doo, but tell me why you loved it, hated it, or felt mad about it in detail so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E. You have been you. This has been another Stephen King review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.